Good afternoon, family and friends. I'm here with another video. Um, this video that I'm going to do was actually recommended by one of my subscribers, Laura. Um, so Laura, if you're out there watching, thank you for your suggestion. But her suggestion was, um, what about if you do a video on surprises? Things that surprised you, like things about moving here that you didn't know. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to take it one step further. There definitely were some surprises, um, good and bad. But there's a few of these I did know just because I visited the villages like five times before we moved here. And I've watched tons of videos and... Um, really tried to do my research like you all probably are doing and just learned a lot about the villages and what to expect. Um, there's actually a really good book also out there called Inside the Bubble and that has a, a lot of really good information and you can get that on Amazon. So if you're, you know, interested in that. But um, so that really helped me know a lot of stuff before I got down here so there weren't as many surprises. Um, so I'm going to talk about not just things that were surprises to me, but things that might be surprising to you or someone that has just moved here. Um, so I'm going to start with the startup. So there's so many things when you move in that extra things that you might um, want to do that you might not have thought of. Now, these things that I'm going to talk about are not required. It's not things that you absolutely, you must do these. But they're things, optional things, that a lot of people um, do once they move in. Some people will wait and do it down the road, maybe a year after they move in or a couple years down the road. Um, because obviously, if you do every one of these things, it can get pretty costly pretty quickly. Um, so I'm going to talk about some of those items now. So one of those items is epoxy. If you've ever seen epoxy floors, um, a lot of people will epoxy their lanai's or epoxy their garage floors. It just makes it look a lot nicer and easier to maintain. Actually, I can show you. My husband actually did ours. So if you want to get a look down here, this is our, this is our lanai. And you could see the floor down here where it was epoxy. Um, so a lot of people will do that with their lanai's or with their into their garages. So that's an optional thing that you can do. Um, another item is landscaping. When you move into your house, you have um, pine straw and it just doesn't really look as nice as what maybe rock or even mulch would probably look a little better. So a lot of people will go ahead and take that mulch out right away. Um, so that's one thing people um, will do. Paint. I know that our house, it was just all the walls were just plain white. Um, so we added some color, just kind of some color here and there to just make, you know, the walls pop. Um, signs. If you've ever been to the villages and drove around, you'll see most houses have like a lamp post in the front of their home and a lot of people will hang signs on that lamp post with their names sometimes they'll even put their their pets names on it also um, we actually ordered one our agent actually gave us a gift certificate um, to get one of those but it was like a three month wait so um we're going to have to wait three months to get it. But a lot of people like to have those in front of their house, just with their names on them. Um, so that's something nice to have. Some people opt to get gutters. 
they usually have gutters like on the front of your house but not all around so some people will opt to do that um, attic stairs that's something else at least in this area that I moved into, the houses do have um, attic access in their garages, but in order to access it, you gotta get a ladder and climb up there. So a lot of people will order attic stairs where they'll have a contractor come out and they will actually install like pull down, where you just pull down the stairs and then it's much easier to um, get up and down your attic. Uh, sprinkler donuts, that's another one. So something that you might not know is when you buy a house down here, at least in this area, they all come with sprinkler and systems installed all around your yard. The developer will actually set your sprinklers on a timer and they'll walk you through that and teach you how to um, change the timer if you need to. Um, but because you do have these sprinklers in your yard, a lot of people will get what they call donuts, sprinkler donuts. And these are like little concrete circles that you have put around each sprinkler head. It helps to keep the dirt out and it also helps when you're mowing your lawn. It kind of helps to protect those sprinkler heads so you don't run over and damage them. Um, so that's another thing that a lot of people get. Um, another thing that you might not know, being a new person moving in is um, there's a lot of ongoing contracting work that a lot of people um, will have. Mowing grass, that's one of them. Most people around here do hire people to mow their grass. We don't. We bought our own lawnmower, so we don't really, um, we decided to just mow our own grass. We figure our yard is small enough that we can do that on our own. But a lot of people will hire contractors to do um, like weed control in their, in their lawn, pest control in their lawn, fertilizing their lawn. Um, a lot of the contractors that you hire, they can kind of group these services together and give you one price for that. Um, but we have what they call St. Augustine grass. I'm not a big fan. Back home, our grass was just pretty and soft and you know, you could walk across it barefoot and it felt really good underneath your feet. But here, I don't know. It's a different climate, so they need different grass down here. They don't have dirt like they do up north. It's more like sandy. So they have to use more hardier grass, I guess. And it kind of crunches when you walk on it. But from what I understand, it's prone to um, pests that can harm your grass, like cinch bugs. So a lot of people will hire contractors to come out and keep their yard treated um, so they keep their grass healthy and looking nice. Um, I already talked about a sprinkler system. Every house comes with that. Um, a tankless water heater. Now, some people, if you've never had one before, it's going to take you a lot of getting used to. We actually had a tankless water heater where we moved from, so it was no surprise to me. But the tankless water heaters take a lot longer to get the water hot. So if you're going to take a shower, um, you'll probably wanna go in there, turn your water on first, and then get ready for your shower before you walk in. Same with the uh, washing dishes. Um, you're gonna to wanna to have to let your water run for a while before it gets warm. But once you get used to it, it'll just become like a normal, a normal thing for you. Um, pay, that was another big surprise. 
Now, I realize a lot of people, probably most people moving to the villages are retired. I mean, hey, this is a retirement community, right? But it's said that up to 30% of people in the villages actually still work. I think a lot of that's probably due to COVID and opening the door for a lot of people to work from home. But even if you're retired from a job, you know, you might wanna find something part-time down here. Um, so one thing I noticed is the pay is just not what it is up north. Um, my husband was a contractor and he did find a job down here right away, but the pay is not close to what he was making up north. And it's not just him. I've heard other villagers that I've talked to down here that came from up north and they've said the same thing. Now, that might not be the same all over the country, but I know from, you know, probably the Midwest up north, if you're from you know, Ohio, New York, Michigan, Indiana, those states there, um, the pay seems to be less down here. Now, I know they don't have state taxes, so that makes up for a little bit of it because you're not getting state taxes deducted from your paycheck. Um, and then they also say that if you are retired and you are on a pension, your pensions aren't taxed down here. So that's that's a plus. Um, the viewer that actually gave me this idea, she said one of the things that surprised her about the villages was the roundabouts. There are a lot of roundabouts, especially on the two main roads that go straight through the villages, which is Buena Vista and Morse Boulevard almost all the way up those roads, you're gonna hit a roundabout. The reason for those is to keep the traffic moving. If you had a stoplight at every single one of those intersections, it'd take you forever to get from one end to the other of the villages. So they put in these roundabouts to keep the traffic flowing. Um, but if you're not used to roundabouts, it does take a little bit of getting used to. The biggest thing you want to do is just be cautious, you know, make sure that nobody is going to, is coming your way before you enter. Um, even when you're in a roundabout, even though you have the right of way, still look off and make sure that no one else is coming in on you. So just, you just got to pay attention and be a bit more careful. There are even some roundabouts for golf carts. Um, there's a few of those around. So those are pretty, pretty cool. Wildlife. Of course, gators. We don't have that up north. Um, I'm not a huge fan. I just don't want to get too close to them. From what I've been told, they don't actually come running out to attack you. Um, but you don't want to be stupid and get too close anyway. Of course, we've all heard it before. There's been incidents where doggies have gotten um, killed, unfortunately, by gators. So you wanna be cautious when you're walking your dog, don't get him too close to water. Up north, we would go swimming in ponds and lakes and tubing. We'd go down, you know, take a river and go tubing down it. And those are things that I wouldn't do here People do fish. I've seen it. I've seen a lot of people right on the, the edge of the water fishing. Um, I guess the gators don't bother them, but I think it would make me nervous just because I'm, I'm not used to that. Of course, there's a lot of other wildlife that you might not have at home. I know that there's some wild boars um, down here. Believe it or not, there's bears. Now it's not common, you don't see a bear. I've never seen a bear here. But I've seen videos where people mention bears and people have seen them in their driveways. Again, it's not very common, but just be aware that, you know, there are some wild animals out there. Um, people mention coyotes. That's nothing new to me. We had coyotes at home. But wildlife, we don't really have 
poisonous snakes back home and they do down here so just again just when you're out walking just keep your eyes open and watch where you're walking another surprise good surprise is if you're a person that likes performing arts this is an awesome place to be um, I'm sure most of you know about the live music every single day at the squares um, and not just at the squares but a lot of venues restaurants have music every single day but what you might not know is we have three separate venues for performing arts those are the Sharon the Savannah Center and Tara Del Sol I believe it's called where you can go and see any kind of entertainment you can see plays musical performances tribute bands we actually went to the Savannah Center and saw a Christmas Carol really great play was really really shocked at how good it was and then actually I believe uh, later this week we are going to um, the Sharon to see a Christmas a big huge Christmas um, production I think it's called Christmas dreams so we're really looking forward to that so if you're into performing arts you love to go to plays and musicals you're in a good spot because you don't have to drive downtown to a city back home we'd have to drive to Cincinnati to see you know a big performance but here you could see Broadway plays and entertainers and comedians and you know right here in the villages which makes it very convenient and they even have a venue right outside the villages um, called Orange Blossom Opry um, where they have a lot of like country entertainment haven't been but they have some really good well-known entertainers so I'm definitely adding that to my list that might be something I want to do someday um, another surprise is I'm just going to touch on this a little bit but golf cart safety a lot of people think oh it's a golf cart you know you're safe in a golf cart and you are safe in a golf cart if you follow the rules and don't be stupid you know don't go flying around corners and maybe slow down when it's raining and unfortunately there have been people injured and even killed down here in golf carts so just you know they are safe if you do you know drive them cautiously and you know they're not supposed to go over 20 miles per hour but some people do speed up their golf cart store they'll go faster than that um, but just slow down when you go around the corners just don't be stupid um, I have a story to tell about a golf cart we were down here visiting one time and we had a golf cart I believe it was our lifestyle visit and we were I was driving it and it had just rained so the pavement was kind of wet because it had just rained and I was trying to follow the GPS and I saw or my husband says really quickly oh you were supposed to turn there well just out of instinct I slammed on my brakes just you know instinct and the cart totally spun around thank goodness there was no other carts around um, we didn't fall out or t tip over or anything like that so I don't think I was going fast enough to do that but you know we could have fell out we could have got hurt we could have ran into another cart so that's when I realized this is just like a car when you're driving back north and it's snowy outside you got to slow down or even rainy you got to slow down and be careful you got to do the same thing with a golf cart so that might be a surprise to know that just because it's a golf cart don't think it's extremely safe you know it's it's a vehicle you still have to be cautious when you drive it another surprise is 30 percent that's the statistic that I have heard 30 percent of villagers work and because of that 
there is a lot more activities during the day. So there's a lot of things that, um, a lot of clubs and things that some of us who are working don't get a chance to do because we're working. Now, this is a retirement community. I would definitely wanna do things during the day if I was retired. Um, and another thing to keep in mind about that is that a lot of these clubs or places to meet up, whether it's you know to do a craft or play a game or Zumba or line dance, whatever it is, a lot of these are led by, most of these in fact, are led by volunteers from the villages. So they're gonna volunteer when it's convenient for them and when they feel like they have the time. If more people who do work would like to volunteer and do groups, clubs, um, activities in the evenings, I'm sure the rec centers would accommodate you because there's a way you can start, anyone can start their own club. There's a process. Um, but you just need to reach out to one of the rec centers. So my point being that, yes, there are a lot more activities to do during the weekdays than in the evenings, which leaves some of us working folks out. But, you know, some of us working folks, I think we just need to step up to the plate and, you know, start our own clubs and get togethers that are in the evenings. Another thing that surprised me was how many people that I have met from back home or at least close to the area back home. Now I will say I'm from Ohio and Ohio is one of the states that is represented the most in the villages. Florida is your number one, a lot of Floridians down here. Um, but there's also a lot of New York, um, Michigan, Ohio, Wisconsin. There's probably, you know, six, seven, eight states where there's a big presence of. And Ohio is, is one of the top ones. So I guess it's not that surprising that I would meet people from Ohio. But I haven't met a ton of people. So just the few people that I've met. The other day we were at the dog park and got to talking and you know where are you from well not only are they from ohio but they're from the exact area that i'm from or at least the surrounding area a surrounding town um you know been to some of the same places so that was kind of surprised to actually meet people that are not just from my state but actually from the area that i'm from um, and then the last one that I want to touch on is for grocery stores. Um, of course, we have Publix is probably the most common one, but Publix is kind of expensive. There's also um, Winn-Dixie. We do have all these down here. But back home, the big store back where I'm from was Kroger's. And I found out, and this was a big surprise for me, Kroger's actually has a warehouse down here. And although you can't go to a Kroger grocery store and shop, um, you can actually go online, go on the Kroger uh, website, order your groceries, and they'll deliver them to your house. Um, it is, I believe it was $10 to have them deliver your order. And you can have them, you can set it up for, you know, the same day even. So that's something to keep in mind. Even though it's $10, it's convenient to have it delivered straight to your home. And you might actually even, even paying the $10, you might actually even save a little bit over maybe than going to like Publix and going shopping. So those were my surprises if you have moved to the villages or um, you even if you've been here a while let me know some of your surprises were there things that surprised you about moving down here to the villages 
I'm trying to get my target audience is for people that have either just recently moved to the villages or just curious to learn more about the villages. Maybe they are planning on moving to the villages soon or maybe just somewhere down down the road in you know a few years um, so i'm trying to do videos where i can answer some questions and give you a perspective um, of what it's like so please if you have any um, ideas for videos like laura did if you have any questions um, maybe you thought of some challenges or some surprises that i didn't think of you know, feel free to shoot me an email or comment in the comments. And, you know, I will try to include them in a video. Um, I think the next video I'm going to do is I'm going to answer some of my some viewers' questions. Um, I try to answer questions as they come in. YouTube is not all I do. Of course, I'm, I work full time. So I just do this here and there when I have a little bit of time. Um, so, but I really do try to answer the comments, the majority of the comments that I get, you know, if they have questions in that, I try to answer them. Um, but not everybody reads the comments, especially if you're watching YouTube on TV, you might not want to go through and read every comment. So if you want to um, send me some questions that you have, my next video, I'm going to take some of the questions that I've had in the past and answered and do a video on questions and answers. So please feel free, leave me some comments, email me some questions. It can be anything, it can be about the villages, it can be about where I'm from, um, questions about me. Um, just feel free to answer or ask some questions. In my next video, I'm gonna turn in to kind of a Q&A session. Once again, Thank you so much for watching. Um, if you like watching my videos, please like. If you like to know when my have new videos come out, subscribe and you'll get notification. And to all of you that have commented um, with positive feedback, even with negative feedback, um, thank you for taking the time to comment. Thank you for reaching out in emails Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing to those that subs have subscribed to my channel. Have a great day. Bye.